I'm here to present a presentation, my name is Cahal Hibi, uh, towards automated simulation input uh, data. So the outline of the presentation is first, <laughs> this is part of an EU FT7 project called DREAM, uh, I'll give you the full title in a few minutes. And we'll introduce first the DREAM project itself, the ideas behind the DREAM project. Then, as part of that project, we are looking at knowledge extraction, that's the idea of being able to take uh, knowledge from <coughs> database systems that would be available within a, a, a manufacturing company and bring this data into the simulation model to affect uh, near time or real time simulation so that an operator on a shop floor could use the simulation uh, more or less as a des desktop, uh, desktop uh, tool in running simulation in, in a manufacturing. Um, we did a survey of open source uh, data analytics tools. Uh, that were available, and we, we surveyed 52 tools, and from these tools we selected R Pipe 2, which has Python integrated with R. Uh, we then look at standards. Um, from the standards available, we selected uh, the core manufacturing simulation data. Um, we just discussed that a little bit. Um, then we just give briefly the knowledge extraction element, uh, tool architecture, um, a brief description of the case study um, company, and this is a production line that's manufacturing medical devices. Uh, then we'll look at CMSD and the information model in the case study, and look at the implementation, transformation, and then finally conclusions. So the Dream Project, it's a FT7 project. Uh, the site here, if you can't read it, is uh, DR Dream Simulation. If you go into Google and type Dream and Simulation, you'll, it's actually not, it's ORG actually, not C-O-M, okay, it's ORG. Uh, you'll come up with the uh, FT7 project. And the project aim is to enable the shift towards embedding discrete simulation-based quantitative decision-making at multiple levels of a manufacturing. So um, there's multiple partners in the project. There's partners ourselves, uh, DCU, Dublin City University. There's a company in Ireland, uh, Boston Scientific. Um, there are partners in Germany uh, and Turkey as well involved in the project. And also we have a, a SME company who specializes in open source simulation software. So the research objectives then, one was to look at, we did a research into open source tools and modeling. Uh, because it's an FT7 project, they will not fund a narrow topic. They're looking at funding wider uh, projects in, in, in uh, European Union. So we looked at modeling. That is the looking at tools that could be used, open source tools that could be used to support uh, the pre-coding phase of simulation. We also looked at simulation open source tools, and we also looked at knowledge management based tools. Um, we surveyed these, um, then we used these tools to develop what we call a semantic free open simulation application development platform. That is, um, we want a platform that separates from the uh, not tied tightly to the GUI, but as a separate uh, simulation platform that you can go in, edit, and, uh, and change, and also use that to embed that within a, um, a decision support system in a manufacturing company. Um, we then want to provide this as an open simulation tool, um, as an as open source library for people to uh, add to this tool. Um, we also carry out research into methodologies because simulation is not uh, is not just writing the code in a simulation tool. There's also support for the um, pre-simulation steps in, in a simulation project. So we're looking at methodologies there to assist companies in assisting them in gathering information to be used within a simulation tool. Uh, as part of the project, we're also using the knowledge extraction tools. So um, this is where we would have uh, Information stored in ERP systems and manufacturing uh, enterprise resort planning tools or manufacturing execution tools or other data systems to support real time. So we want to get the data in from these systems through some standard into the simulation model and then use that simulation model for what we hope will be real time simulation or near time, near real time simulation. So we want to prove the platform in four case studies, two multi international companies, um, one based in, in, in Ireland and the other company 
um, is Infinium, which is based in Germany, and then we've told two small SME companies, one in Germany, one in Turkey. So, from that, uh, if I just elaborate a little bit about our goal, uh, we want to develop a tool um, basically in Python. There is tools available out there um, that are available. Uh, I know there's going to be a presentation next in Janssen, and you have it in Java. Um, weren't too aware of that tool because you only released it. It's only recently. Yeah, only recently. So I know George was in contact with you with regard to that. Uh, we've selected Python because Python is, uh, there is tools out there, for example, Omni++, which is a tool, open source, specifically based at modeling uh, computer networks, wireless systems. It, it can be, there's alterations needed to that tool in order to be used for manufacturing. Um, there's some elements that don't exist in that tool. But that tool is used to develop um, uh, applications, so it's a simulation platform, and has been used to, to create several applications used in the um, modeling of um, wireless systems, uh, computer systems, etc. And we would like to emulate this within the manufacturing domain. So we choose Python because Python is an easier language to, to write code in. It has a downside, though it's not fast as Java or uh, C++, uh, but we hope to overcome that issue by using um, cloud computing in some manner and also to look at how you implement the Python code itself. Um, so we want to develop an open source platform in Python uh, that people can gain access to, um, add new objects to it, etc. Um, we then want to have a loose link between a user interface. So from our research with the companies, we um, have identified that there's a super user who could use the open source simulation platform and the compatible user interface in order to create a, a interface to be used by an industrial engineer type of person in a company where you could build customized objects to be used by that, by that person. We could also embed the open discrete simulation platform directly into a decision support system. So for example, if you have a someone who needs to run simulation in a company uh, who needs to allocate workers, they could run that as a desktop on, on within the company, extracting knowledge from their ERP system into the simulation tool and running it to answer a question on the shop floor. We also want to look at systems knowledge, which I'm going to speak about here more generally, is how you could extract information from external databases, bring that into a simulation tool, and lastly, we're looking at pre-coding phase, looking at some methodologies that could be used for uh, supporting pre-coding phase of simulation. So we'll now look more specifically at the knowledge extraction tool. One element of the knowledge extraction tool is to try and extract information from different um, organizations. These will be information available in MES systems, ERP systems, and other databases. And we want to dr drive, uh, draw that uh, information into the simulation tool, again, to try and affect uh, more real-time simulation-based uh, applications. Um, we did a survey of open source tools around uh, uh, data science tools, and we surveyed 55 open source tools in this area. Um, from these tools, for this work, we've selected, um, you can't read that there because it's in black, but it's general characteristics, project activity, operational characteristics, and data mining, uh, theoretical um, operations. I'm sorry, it's in, it's in black there. Um, and we selected RPI, uh, RPI2 to, to uh, be used as the platform in which to develop a, uh, a set of tools that could be used to extract data from a external data source. RPI tool is an interface, and it, it, run, it runs in Python, but it interfaces in with a well-known tool called R. It gives the user the ability to have full access to the R function. Um, with this, we can, in Python, run functions for system analysis, Visualization effects, you can draw uh, graphs and plots. And also within it, there's also uh, elements, because it's a statistical tool, or we can run some data mining tools as well. Um, the, the site for this is available here. You can see RPI tools, it's given there. Um, it's quite an active project. Um, and it's also has a, a licensing tool here, which is the lesser general public license, which allows you to embed this tool into other proprietary tools and not release the source code within that. 
here, we did not look at the standards available. So, in effect, there was three standards that we could use within simulation to get information from uh, external data sources. The well-known, uh, well, uh, one that has been proved to some extent uh, to uh, the, an organization called NEST in the US, where they have used CMSD to integrate with uh, proprietary simulation tools. I think one was plant simulation, where they took information from a data source to prove that this works. So we looked at CMSD, but there's other standards out there, like uh, the SCET standard, and there's also a standard called Automation ML. Um, neither, neither the step of the Automation ML really were suitable for this, so we choose the CMSD standard as a tool to use. Um, the reasons are given here. It enables data exchange. It's specifically built for drawing data in from external databases, um, building a simulation from it, uh, so it suits this purpose quite well. There's two uh, standards that have been published. The first one is the um, UML, Unified Modeling Language, and it also has been released as XML standards as well. Um, this is the particular standard here, so it covers um, aspects like the layout on a simulation platform. It also covers you know, parent information, resource information, uh, production operations, and production planning. And it allows all this type of information to be taken from data sources to build a model, and it also uh, would support the data to be embedded into the model to be ran within a simulation tool. Um, this is the basic architecture that we have for the knowledge extraction tool. So on the left, you see the pro uh, possible data sources. One would be the ERP systems, MES systems, and other data could be also stored in other databases. So the manufacturing companies, they may store, for example, information on workers and how where they actually work on the line. And that kind of information may not be stored in an MES or ERP, uh, ERP system. We then have three elements within the knowledge extraction tool. Again, it's in black, which is not easy to read, but the first element here is just data extraction. We want to extract the data from these data sources. The second step is to do some processing, not complex, but simple processing on this data. And the third is to prepare output, which will be fed into a tool here, which is called MANPI. MANPI is a, a layer that's been built on top of the open source tool called SIMPI, which allows us to implement process modeling. So if you have a machine you want to model, you have an object which you can take and say, I want to model a, a machine. Or if you want a cube, you can take an object and model the particular cube. Uh, George will be given a further discussion on this, I think, at the session, um, not this session, but the next session. Okay. So looking at the data input, um, we just have built some RPI tools that do, again, you have difficulty reading this. The main scripts would be called, and I'll just read through it. We have um, tools that would do system me measures, simple tools that are used in R. You do uh, distribution fitting. Um, you also can export data here to CMSD or Johnson or JSON is another output. And you can also output data to an Excel file, whichever um, one of these methods you want to output the data to. This library is currently an open source tool. It's uh, based in a server uh, at that address there. Again, if you go and type in dream in a simulation, you will get through that uh, dream simulation website for the um, project, you will get access to this actual library itself. So we look a little bit more in detail at each of these um, steps. So we look at data extraction. So in data extraction is the art of uh, trying to retrieve data from the different um, systems, the ERP systems, MES systems. And we use Python libraries to do this. Um, we can extract data, at the moment we can extract data from um, CSV, TXT, and Excel type of files. But further in the project, we will be moving on to getting data from um, the ERP systems and MES systems. At the moment, the companies haven't difficulty trying to get this type of data 
released to us because um, internal issues in trying to uh, organize their databases and uh, man data management systems. But we're promised we'll get this shortly. So that step currently works with these type of tools here. Then we look at data processing. So on data processing, um, it will have three main steps. Again, we use RPI2 with calls to the R function. So it will handle missing data. If data is missing, it will deal with the missing data. It will also do statistical measures uh, on the particular data. And lastly, it will then try to do distribution fitting on the distributions that were retrieved from the external data sources. We look at data output analysis then. Uh, output analysis is where you're um, more or less writing out the description of the simulation tool. You can write it to a CMSD file. So here it's describing, for example, a, a process here, process one. It's saying that that process has a normal distribution with these type of parameters for that distribution. You can also write it out to uh, JSON, which is a um, JavaScript type of code that is used as an exchange of data between the GUI and the MANPI and GUI and the extra knowledge extraction tool as well. It's very similar to CMSD um, in the sense that here we have a process one, you're, getting, you're more or less getting the same information that's been written to using the JSON file itself. And lastly, we can also write this information if need out to a spreadsheet, and it's writing the same information here. You can see it's uh, uh, distributions that are written for that particular tool. Uh, lastly, we also, as part of this tool, have implemented some libraries for output analysis using RPI2. And uh, we just mentioned these briefly. Here you have ManPy, which again is a layer which is built on top of SimPy, a Python library. And information is coming back from RPI. And then we wish to maybe carry out some statistical analysis on the results coming out of ManPy. So the tool is able to do this. Um, it also can give you um, statistical measures. So you have measuring the constant intervals, etc. And also you can graph the outputs using the graph tools, again, by gaining access into the R library tools themselves. So we just explained a little bit more about the tool. So when building the tool, we use the standard CMSD. So the knowledge extraction tool will retrieve information from your MES or um, ERP system, it will then use the CMSD code in order to build the simulation model, where what machines are linked to what other machines, and it will build it within the MANPI tool itself. We also have interconnections then between the, what we call the DREAM GUI and the knowledge extraction tool and the MANPI. This is done through JSON uh, ex exchange. So the user, when he creates or loads a simulation model, will communicate with a knowledge extraction tool, although this can happen individually, this can happen without the user knowing it. You could say, I just want to run a model on MANPI, and it would automatically retrieve that information and fill the database with the current data coming from the database. Uh, it retrieves the information then from the data source, so just the instance information that's available in the data source that would say what uh, information needs to be put into each of the uh, building blocks within the simulation tool. It will send this information over to GUI, and the GUI will then communicate with the MANPI model that carries out the simulation tool. So the GUI just acts as a user interface, as we said, for a, an industrial engineer type of uh, person that would be working in this area. We look a little bit more on the CMSD because that's the main focus of this paper. Uh, so it's this link here where we're just looking a little bit more on the core manufacturing uh, simulation data model. Oh, so we'll just look at that here. The next slide. So we're taking a real manufacturing plant um, from Boston Scientific in Cork 
and it manufactures medical devices. In the medical devices, this is the layout. It's again quite hard for you from here to see it, but you have process one here, process two, a station. That's another station. Yeah. Process four, five, and six. Then these both are manual assembly lines that feed into the process seven, and then process seven distributes to um, testing stations here, and then you have packaging stations that occur in, in this part of the of the line. So it has taken this database, I'll show you in a minute how, how it did that, but it's hard to show this in detail. So it has taken, for example, the resource definition through the CMSD um, standard. So here, again, it's quite hard for you to see, but it's resource type that we're looking at here, resource seven, what type of resource that is. It's also taking the process information. So here you have a how the stations are linked together in order to produce an actual uh, product itself. So here it's saying uh, we have a process plan that gives the sequence of PAs linked to PB and PC and, and PD. So it links them together within the simulation tool. And here we also have information on the parts, how the parts are routed through the stations. So again, it's difficult to see, but we're saying here we have the part is an input to the process, and it's how it gives the routing of the part going through each of the stations. So here we have other information coming in from the, the database. So given an, an instance of using CMSD to show how we could extract scrap information from a a spreadsheet using the CMSD data. Um, so we have three steps at the bottom here. You'd have data extraction, again, data processing, and output preparation. And it's just shown that from the spreadsheets, um, how we take that information in using the CMSD into the simulation model itself. Now, this necessarily won't be used in the real system. We'll probably use JSON to link the data the Dream GUI to the knowledge extraction tool and also the Dream, the dream GUI to the um, MANPI tool itself. So to conclude, uh, we've presented the development of a knowledge extraction tool. Um, at the moment, we're halfway through the project, so it's another 18 months to go. Um, uh, the different objects are available as an, uh, as an open source tool. They're available to be worked on as one wishes to at this stage. And on that hope, there is methods for um, testing the software, et cetera, on the, on the GitHub tool itself. Um, we described how we could take data from our real uh, company and build a simulation model using, using the CMSD tool itself. Um, and future work is to expand this, uh, essentially, uh, deploy it in the real pilot cases and test them for real. So I'd like to skip then to uh, uh, we have um, six minutes for questions. Can I invite the first questions from Paul here yeah, and Mark second? What yeah. um, uh, ratio are you expecting compared to real time to your simulation model? You're extracting data in near real time, but then how quickly does the operator get to find out in other words what's the latency you're expecting? In, in, in the ideal situation, you'd have someone who's on the shop floor who wants to run the simulation. It would go to run the simulation, wouldn't do an extraction, would probably go to run it, and it would automatically extract it from the EMS system. This is the ideal situation. Um, but it's proving difficult to implement. It would extract the information from the EMS system, the ERP system, populate the model, and then it would run. So it would be more updated with the, the last tranche of information that you, you are using in the EMS system to update the flow of parts through the system, etc. That's the ideal situation, um, that how you would use it. So I think I understand how you're expecting the unit interaction. Um, I'm not sure I understand how you're getting the script to the model information. So you're, you're extracting that from the database yes. and automatically constructing the links between the system and the process, right? Yes. How they're 
where how they actually now we've done it on not the real data that's in the company. Right. We've done it on a dump for some of our data that mimics what yeah. they're doing it is how yeah. they actually did the dump. So there's nothing in that data that being that defines what the process is. So you're reading that data and using what's in there to infer what the process is from the raw data. Yes. Yeah, I think it's stated in the dump that we got from the company that this is how the product goes through ah. the station. Okay. And from that we can infer what the route is through the station. So that must be custom built for each company data. Yes. It would have to be custom built for each company. Right. Yes. So, so the next question is from Barry. It has to be a lot of um, rewriting the code to get it to work in a real real situation. Yeah. Just research stuff. Barry. Yeah. Could you say a little more about what kind of software decisions you're thinking this would support? Is it like dispatching or your code can break down or something along that line? Well, we have four case studies in the, in the company. So one is... Um, one is looking at the Boston Scientific production line in Cork, and this is what we showed there was a plant, and the kind of decision that they could answer would be, if they want, if workers come in in the morning to start working on the line, they want to allocate the workers to the stations. And in that circumstance, they'd extract information from the database, run the simulation to help them make a decision of where to place the, the workers on the line. That's one instance that we have in their scenario. We have another instance for a company in, in Germany where they're looking at a job shop, so it's a small SME company. And they're looking at if a new job came in, um, could we use the simulation to tell us when we would expect to get this product out of the line? Uh, again, they would have a scenario where someone would hopefully have the information backed up by data that's on the shop floor, uh, coming from the data source in the shop floor, and then run the simulation to say, we expect this product to get out in, uh, I don't know, weeks, times, or, or another. And also in that case, the manager of the company might reallocate work within the simulation to find out a better routing by which, you know, he might delay some product and what order he came in, push that ahead on the sequence of work. They're the type of scenarios we're kind of looking at here. And Infineon is another company where we're looking more in depth at um, the... Um, demand planning, so we're looking at a, quite a complex supply chain for the semiconductor manufacturer. We're in looking at how you disaggregate the demand from the, within the, the demand planning itself. Um, and also within Finney, I think we're looking at a, a, also a case study for supply chain contracting. So again, you get data from different customers, you map that onto distribution, and you use the, the sequence for system to help with the contract configuration. They're all kind of I, uh, realistic, but to a certain extent hypothetical too. Yeah. So the last question from Kathy. Yeah. Uh, considering the, the data sources and the connections that you have, um, are you looking at both distribution fitting as well as transactional data that you want to directly feed into your model? Uh, Barry might answer that. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that they're, they're not the focus really of this project. It's more to. Uh, it's more or less to provide a library of tools that could be used in this circumstances. And then you'd hope to attract people that would use the MANPI simulation tool and maybe the, uh, the um, data fitting tools as best they could to actually answer the question that they want answered by the simulation. But in our case, we're going to try and see if we can get the data coming in from the NES system and map it onto distribution to see how it works in, in reality. At, at the moment, we're just looking at using the deterministic times for now. But we'd hope to then move on to using uh, distributions and see what effect that would have on decision-making in the shop floor.